Hello and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and today we have an extra first impressions video uh, because I wanted to get this out um, as soon as I got it. I've had this on pre-order for a little while. Um, so this is a new tool, um, model ship that's just hitting the um, stores now. I've received it this morning, um, it's the 8th of January. I've been quite excited to see what this would look like. Now when I pre-ordered it I was aware that it was um, a take-home kit but um, I wasn't aware of this bit um, and I wasn't aware of this bit so let's just talk you through what I do and what I don't know. So when I pre-ordered it I was expecting um, a, a take-home kit. Now to my knowledge take-home have never done a 1350 ship kit before. They very recently released some 1700 um, First World War period ships um, uh, along with in the same scale some um, airship Zeppelin type stuff uh, and I think you even get, um, in fact I'm fairly sure you can get a kit with both in. So there's been some exciting stuff coming out of Taycom. Uh, when um, I heard that there was a 1350 kit coming out that really made me prick my ears up. Um, so when this arrived this morning I noticed um, a couple of collaborations in this um, so snowman models uh, many of you might not come across um, they they do have a Facebook page and basically they are a small um, fan based um, design outfit uh, that specialize in highly detailed model kits so um, I've just had a quick look through the box. We'll do a proper first review in a sec. Um, all the plastic appears to be manufactured by Tacom. Uh, the um, instruction book looks Tacom style, although I've not looked on the inside, um, rather than Das Work style. Um, I'm guessing that Snowman models have done the actual design work and then take them have done the tooling and producing the plastic. I have no idea what Daz Work have done um, with this at all, um, whether it's supply the box or supply the artwork or, or what, I am really not sure, but everything seems to say take on and Snowman models. So... I'm not too concerned about these people being involved because I can't see what, the, what they've brought to it. Anyway, let's have a look at uh, what we get. So, uh, we've got a nice piece of artwork on the front which is showing this um, Saxon class frigate. Um, it says three in one, uh, which means I think you can do three different uh, variations. Um, it says detailed static display plastic model, PE and clear parts included, and three types of markings. So you can do three different ships. Um, and that one there, I think, denotes the first 1350 kit from Tacom. Now, when you look at where this sits in, in the uh, world of catalogues, there is no reference to this on the DAS Work site. Um, but it's listed on the take-home site, so I'm treating it as a take-home kit. Um, along the bottom here, it says it's not a toy. Read the uh, ready-to-assemble precision model kit. May vary from the box. Cement and paint not included. Intended for collectors of age 14 and above. And as we all know, that is because it's uh, got photo etch in it. And the drawing is by some chap called Jason not Any me. of you who perhaps don't know, um, the uh, Saxon class is the latest of the German Navy's um, air defence frigates. Um, in reality, they're more comparable to a de destroyer. In fact, were originally intended to replace the Luchens class. Um, basically, they're an upgrade of their previous Brandenburg class uh, with more uh, modern design um, focusing on stealth technology, um, which is why you see this angular shape. So they're equivalent to um, the Royal Navy's um, Type 45 destroyer in terms of uh, capability um, at a basic level. 
Secondly, uh, the German government requested four of these, but then they knocked off the fourth one. So there's only been three ships ever made of it, and this kit should cover all three of them. Uh, and it cost Germany around 2.1 billion to build those three ships uh, back in 1996. So. Um, you know, in terms of working life, they're heading towards the back end of their their working life now. Um, so that's why you've got this nice combination of a, a modern look and still some classic busyness to them. So I think it's quite um, an eye-catching uh, ship as it goes. Right then, as we look at the sides of the box, they are both the same and emulating what you get on the top cover. Um, and then on this side we have a nice large picture um, of the ship. It's referencing MIG, so I'm guessing we're going to be referencing MIG paint colours all the way through. Um, and then we've got um, the take on contact um, information um, and a barcode thingy. And on this side we have some pictures of the sprue, the decals, the photo etch, that's included. So let's have a proper look inside. As always, I'm going to comment on the box. Um, the the bottom box is um, double thickness corrugated, quite sturdy. The upper box is single. It's thicker than is often the case, but could easily be damaged in in transit if you're not careful. Mine came packed in a really nice sturdy box, so no issues there. What you can see is. of space in that box more space than is needed so um, yeah um, that might cause you problems um, or if it's getting shipped around the world I don't know um, but I pref prefer to have things a bit more tightly packed personally um, all of the plastic sprues seem to be oh no they're not uh, we have some bags with two sprues in and some with just one so the bigger ones just one oh that bag has two in as well so it's a combination and then we have another bag at the bottom with the quite small i have to say uh instruction booklet let's deal with that lot first so the instruction manual is an a3 stapled landscape format um affair uh, on the front cover, uh, we've got a basic technical drawing, and then we've got a little bit of um, history, um, some facts about her dimensions, facts about her propulsion, and then some facts about her armament. So um, you get a nice top-level view um, of the ship on the first page. Um, and there we have... Um, what I believe to be the um, kit number, which is 03.01.6001. And as we open it up, on the first page we've got the uh, read before you assemble. It's got a very small basic key for building and colour information and profiles by MIG. So we then have the MIG um, call outs there. It's okay. Step one, um, and we're dealing with the build up of the hull. And what we can see is we've got an option here for um, waterline. Uh, we've got the two hull sides, which is a similar approach to what uh, Tamiya do uh, with their newer kits, and then a, um, a separate transom end piece, which is nice. It means the detail level should all be good. Um, I don't see, I'm just going to flip ahead, no, there is no um, braces going in to strengthen that. So if you were doing the um, waterline version, uh, you, might, you might want to be putting the deck in at this point, I would guess, because um, that will be a little bit flimsy possibly. Um, have to have a look at that a bit more closely. It's telling you to drill out a three millimeter hole. It's nice that they've given you the size, and they, not everyone does, but it also looks like we've got a place where we can put a nut if we want to put an alternative type of stand in, so that's good. 
Step two is a sub-assembly of the shaft lines and propellers. They seem to be a single moulded piece, so it'll be interesting to see how well they've come out. And then in step three, we're putting in the uh, bulbous bulb um, bow uh, radar, uh, sorry, sonar location, I would reckon, um, going in the front there. Doing it separately means you've got a, you've got a nice moulding that captures the shape correctly. Um, interestingly, it looks like we've got no hose pipes for the um, anchors, so we'll have to have a look at that. I like the fact that they're doing a little blow up um, of it a bit closer, um, so you get an understanding of the positioning, particularly of that forward bow anchor. And then in step four, we've got the shaft lines going on. Um, what are probably the propeller protection? Um, bars on the hull and then interestingly the rudder looks like it's fixed in place and and you can't animate that um, yeah that um, the shaft lines the way they attach is interesting right looks like they sort of clip in and the location point is not at the very end which might improve the fit so I'll be interested to have a look at that when we get to it Step five, uh, again, we're putting more of those protection bars on, on the other side, um, and they're blowing up again, so they're not skimping. And a bit like Airfix do, they're showing you one side, then showing you the other side. Um, so I, I quite like that for, for uh, newer, um, less experienced modelers, means you're not missing something. Um, bilge kills are going on separate. Some people don't like them separate, others don't mind them. Personally, I think you get um, a better moulded part if it's separate. Um, so, yeah, I don't mind that. Step six, two sub-assemblies of ship's boats. And then we've got the deck. So, let's see. We're putting capstans on the deck. And what look like... Well, there's some form of davit there or lifting gear of some type... And they look like the uh, gangway ladders in their stowed away position. And uh, they could well be torpedo tubes. And then, all oh, right, okay. So some some form of box that's related to, I guess, launching the dirigible boat there. And then on the other side, you've got the other boat with its uh, davits. Okay, so we're populating the deck a little bit before we uh, put it in, and it's looking like there's little cutouts in the side, so they're putting them on because you need to put them on before you install. Not so sure about the capstans, however. Right, step seven, um, and we're starting... doesn't really tell you if there's a particular doesn't really tell you if there's a particular order for these sub-assemblies but we we are building sub-assemblies up before we then put them the, the main assembly together so we've got the flight deck the helicopter deck at the back which includes some form of uh, equipment so and I think that is some photo etch parts going on so I'd be a little, little concerned about putting the uh, flagstaff on something that delicate before we put it into the into the hull. Uh, we've got the uh, forward main uh, gun being assembled, which appears to be uh, poseable, so that's nice. Um, and then we're putting the two decks in, so that a lot of that is the interior deck. You've got the the forecastle. Um, and then you've got interior deck and then separately we've got the flight deck outside of the the hangar. I'm not sure whether the hangar is going to be on some of that deck as well. well, well I guess we'll work that out. Um, then they put in the uh, flagstaff at the, at the front on. And we've got some other details there. So um, the fair leads are um, going into the inside of the bulkheads at this stage so that's nice they're not just molded into the side piece there they've got separate um, fair leads so they should look really quite cool when they're on I don't think I've seen that before 
<laughs> in fact, you have to assemble them out of two parts. So that's interesting. Step eight, more sub-assemblies. So a bit like uh, Tamiya do, uh, where you build up sub-assemblies and then they go to the larger sub-assembly. That's the same approach take on, uh, are taking. And um, uh, yeah, I quite like that. Each, each section you can focus on in its own right. So we've got um, some armament of some type there, then some lockers. Um, that's the uh, vertical uh, missile firing system. Um, I'm not sure what gets mounted on there. Oh, this here, whatever that is. Um, some form of missile system. And a separate bulkhead and some separate details that aren't moulded on which include aerials so uh, quite a bit of detail going on there and look how busy those bulkheads look compared to some with ships we've seen in the first impressions where that's just blank that looks really nice let's hope they've carried that through to the plastic okay so then we're installing that which includes the forward bulkhead and the bridge windows uh, which is at this point here so that pretty much completes your bow so it, it feels like they're going from bow to stern with the assembly okay so then we've got um, another deck section with bulkheads being put together um, again they look very busy don't they that's nice uh, we've got um, life raft um, and mounts and the mounts look like they're photo etched to me um, and then funnel well she has two funnels but we're only making one at this stage um, more life rafts and then um, it's not a phal phalanx it's a Rhine metal alternative but similar similar type of thing uh, automatic machine gun type of thing and we're mounting those onto those onto that's the upper side of that deck so that's the underside we see there um, and the upper side so I'll be interested to see if we've got jet pin marks and things like that there um, so uh, more missile systems as well and some lockers uh, it's open backwards going against the bulkhead. Uh, then we're putting the first funnel in and some more of the missile systems facing the alternative way. Uh, then we're building the radar tower, uh, which has some little platforms as well, and the yard arms and some radomes, various little bits and pieces. Looks like we've got hand rungs moulded in. More uh, radar communication equipment being sub-assembled and then going there. So you do have to look at the sub-assemblies first. Then we've got what I imagine will be the bridge roof by the looks of it. With all those various radars and things on the top. Um, and we're assembling another radar tower right we've got all that we've just built up is being added to that um, deck that we have just built up so that's going in after we've added some of these uh, I personally might prefer to do it another way around but that's just personal preference more radomes going on and that whatever that is looks like long-range cameras to me and uh, a lamp or a horn um, but that would yeah no that'd be facing forward so that would all make sense then we've got the second funnel unit being put together and the mast which stands just behind them so strictly speaking with the radar masts and the actual mast you've got three masts on this ship which is interesting um, so we're then putting that deck onto this deck that we'd made up and 
that is going to have to fit really nicely into there because you don't want to be filling gaps when you've got all that lot put on. Not sure I will build it quite that way, but uh, it looks suitably busy, doesn't it? Um, the hangar is, non is a non-existent space. Hangar doors are in the fixed down position and there's no internals there at all. Lots of opportunity for scratch building should you be uh, that way inclined though. Um, put, a, put a deck in, open these up and uh, fill your boots. We'd need some really good reference photos of the inside of the hangar to do that, but would be interesting. Um, and is that like a little control tower or something that, that's sat there? Yeah, could be, could be. Right, we're at step 19 now, and we're building up another deck with bulkheads. Again, they look really busy. I'm looking forward to seeing the plastic. Um, so that's building up this little box area here. Um, and we've got some holes to drill, one millimeter. Then we are putting on more life raft ejectors. Um, we've got some more weaponry on there. Um, and then some form of bulkhead that separates them. And then you've got the sub assemblies for them at the top. So it's just repeating what we've done before. See, you might be tempted to make all of those in, in one go, set up a little production line and get them cleared off, maybe. Then we've got the main radar array being mounted on that. Um, yeah, so very much like the Type 45 destroyer, same, same type of thing. But what they appear to have done is spread it out a little bit more amongst um, more areas on the ship. So you can imagine um, on a Type 45, one decent hit to the radar tower and you've taken out a lot of its communication and eyes, whereas this is spread out a little bit more on the German ship. Uh, okay, so that looks like that's probably going to rotate from the looks of that cap. And then that's going into place there. So we must be near the end. We have some bulkheads going in there. I imagine they're collapsible for when they want to launch the boat. So that's step 22. Step 23, um, more life rafts, more photo etch, just some little bits and pieces. And then a nice blown up picture showing you where that is, where how that is orientated behind those ships' boats. Then we're building up the helicopter. Uh, I think that's all plastic parts, the helicopter, which they've left separate rather than showing it on the flight deck. Then we've got the stand being added, step 25. So 25 steps to complete the build. Um, I quite like those instructions, even though the the uh, pages are small, they are quite clear, easy to follow. Um, all that would happen if you made the pages bigger is that the imagery would be bigger. You're not gaining a lot. So yeah, I quite like that. I like that a little less. I think that is a bit small. Um, that is really quite busy. Um, so this is the paint scheme. As we already know, um, ammo paint, so you have to cross-reference if you want to use your chosen paint system. Um, but we've got the colours shouted out there, um, and we're also locating decals. Um, for me, with just my reading glasses on, I'm finding that a little small. My eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Um, so, yeah, I personally would like that a bit bigger, even if they'd spread it up over a couple of pages, so that you were doing some of these little smaller shots separately and, and the holes were a bit bigger. I think that would have helped, but it's just an observation. Um, it's got everything you need here, paint, paint colours and decals. So, yeah, so the white would be for some of the radar rays, um, gun metal, some of the guns, I'd guess. 
Um, I'm struggling to see the numbers, so I'm struggling to find out where things are going. But yeah, that's basically your paint scheme. Um, I don't see how you understand which are the three options that you might want to use. Oh, it says option. So it is showing the three different numbers there. If you look, F220, 221, 219. So it is showing you the three there as, as options. You're going to have to spend a little time of studying that before you get going. And then on the back page, some more recent take on uh, releases, including uh, the Zeppelin that we talked about at the start there, um, which is just over half a meter long. So that's a decent, impressive piece of hot air balloon, isn't it? And then on the back page, we've got a forward view in technical drawing. I quite like that. Right, that's the instructions. Let's look at what else we got in the bag with the instructions. So also in the bag that the instructions were in, we have the decals again in their own bag. Uh, we have a small amount of chain. Now I didn't see obviously the instructions telling you to put the chain on, but we have some very, very small chain. I would say that that was quite closely in scale. Quite often the anchor chains are out over scale. The links, as I look at them, are slightly elongated, so that will look a little bit more authentic. Obviously, they're not uh, they're not um, stud chain as you would want them to be, but uh, that's just not possible at this size. Um, so that will need some chemical blackening. Then we have the small photo etch. Um, so we have some aerials we have those bars that we saw going on right at the start of the build um, the flagstaff one with a folded sort of a-frame and one with separates not quite sure what those are some form of brackets i know they that mounted um some life rafts didn't it um, and i think those are all life raft mounts as well and then we've got some little treads, and again, I didn't easily spot where they were going. But the photo etch looks very nicely done. Try and stop the light reflecting on it. It has um, protective um, plastic, clear plastic on both sides of it as well. So let's have a look at the decals and if you have watched my channel before we've done a number of first impressions of ships and decals is one of those things that I think most companies don't do particularly well when it comes to ships. Um, carrier film is slightly tacky, the protective film is slightly tacky so it doesn't stop it moving around. But, uh, and it hasn't left a residue on there. So let's have a look, see if we can work out the manufacturer to start with. Doesn't say, I didn't see anything on the box that said cartograph, so I don't think these are. So as we look at it, we've got a lot of deck markings, which is all these reds that we can see here. Um, so that's lovely to see. We've got lots of depth markings. That's going to add a lot of interest. We have the flight deck markings. Now, that will be interesting to see how well they go on because the flight deck should have quite a bit of texture. We'll have a look at that in a minute. We've got a flag as a decal, um, which looks okay. Um, and then we've got the different coat of arms for the bow. Um, flight deck letters, identification letters, depending on which ship you end up doing, and um, pennant numbers. Then you've got the ship's names. I didn't quite spot where they went, but we need to study those paint instructions. And then some more deck markings. Um, then we've got some numbers and some little signs there. What we've not got is warning signs. It'd be absolutely littered with warning signs. So, um, but um, other than Airfix, nobody else has ever really included 
warning signs. You can get warning signs uh, decals from places like Atlantic Models um, to judge it up a little bit. The there's two decals there which look like depth markers for the bow, but I can't see that there is any other depth markers. Um, whether that is correct or not, I don't know, but um, at least we've got some. As I look at it, the, the carrier film is really ragged along these edges. They, they remind me of trumpeter quality decals. Um, they, f they feel... Um, not as thick as Tamiya ones, um, but certainly not the thinnest ones have come across. So, yeah, there is not a lot of excess film on them, other than these ones that are at square. You've got a big load of film there. Uh, they all look all right. Right, let's look so at some. I'm going to start with sprue A. I think we have two of those. They're in the same bag. All the bags are the resealable type with a sticky edge. Um, and we have, yeah, the two the same. So sprue A, it tells you that it's take on. Um, it doesn't have a recycle logo on it, which is a shame. It means you won't be able to recycle your sprues. Um, yeah. Um, Okay, we have some very nice moulding going on here. I'm going to just put my um, magnifying glasses on because the detail is really, really tiny. Okay, so we have, wow, we have some breathtaking detail on here. The moulding is really, really crisp. Yeah, okay, so we've got uh, one plastic pedestal and the connection point, the gate, is underneath, so that'll be easy to clean up. You're not going to misshape it. Uh, ray domes have the gate on the top, um, which is probably nothing they can do about that. There is a bit of a seam on it, but it's light. Um, I can see that they've used ejector pin tabs to stop ejector pin marks being on the actual parts which is lovely to see um, we've got some detail on these ray domes here you can see little uh, little um, hatches and these little um, machine gun mounts have all got little control boxes on it and ammunition feeds and so on uh, there's some really nice detail going on with these uh, missile systems. The moulding of the uh, framework is really nice. The lockers have little handles on, or the hatches in that case. And what they've done is they've put the gates for the rafts on the little ridge line so you can just trim them off and, and you won't have much cleaning to do. And I th think those might be the horse, uh, the fair lead openings, which actually are solid, which is a bit disappointing. But um, and we've got a search like that and anchor. Wow, anchor is slide molded because it's got indentations inside um, and the capstan looks like it's slide molded as well I'm not sure if all of these parts are slide molded the detail is absolutely breathtaking um, let's get something behind it so you can see it it is very very crisp the moulding is really, really nice. Quite impressed with that first sprue. Sprue B. Um, so let's start with this. We've got a slide moulded um, piece of superstructure at the front, which has our vertical launch missile system. Um, and the base for that other missile system that we saw. Um, 
and I have to say the detail is beautiful. We've got all the hatches have got um, hinges on. That's got a hinge on. There's looks like something's broken off there. I'm not sure, but there's a little mark there. It seems a strange location to have um, a connection point that you'd cut off. So I think that's something that was moulded on that snapped off. There was nothing in the bag, however. So it might just be a manufacturing blemish, but I don't think so. It has all the hallmarks of something snapped. The um, splinter shields have got the buttresses on. Whether, they, whether they're token or accurate, I don't know. We, we still need to do research for this. Um, but then the sides have got the watertight doors on, cable runs, junction boxes, CCTV cameras, lots and lots of texture detail along the sides there um, that's really nice uh, we've got the rotors for the helicopters there they're a little thick as the plastic but they've done a good job of them uh, the best job they could I think um, given what they've what they're working with um, you might want to see if you can get some photo etch replacements from the likes of Atlantic or white and some models um, and then we've got some well we've got the gun there I mean look at look at the gun Look how fine the moulding is on that. Taking that off will be fun. Um, and some other superstructure parts. All sorts of little little bits and pieces here. Very crisply moulded. Yeah, so let's have a look. You can see all that detail. Isn't that lovely? And all the hinges there. Really, really nice. Really, really impressed. Okay, sprue C. And we have some deck portions and various um, sort of bulkheads. So some of the larger bits here. Um, that's the um, gangways that we saw in their folded position. There's a lot of detail on those as well. Um, and the mast has the ladder moulded in, but it's nicely done under a wash. Will look lovely. Some real beautiful tiny detail in there really really stunning um, then we've got I think they're yard arms bit of a seam on those but nothing major radar front and then when you turn it over my word detail on this is breathtaking uh, let's start with the decks the decks are steel decks so you expect them to be totally smooth and there's some molded on detail but not much, most of it you're adding. Um, so that makes painting of these nice and easy. Um, then we've got a bulkhead here. Um, and just look at how much detail they're cramming onto that. That is what a ship's bulkhead should look like. That is beautiful, it's so busy. Um, wow, that's stunning. Um, and we've got some ventilators here, again, really crisply moulded. Uh, radar dish mount, uh, the hangar doors with the other um, watertight doors in, um, CCTV cameras moulded on in relief, more bulkhead with more watertight doors, more bulkhead this time with flat ventilation, the moulding is so crisp it's just lovely. Um, that's the two funnels. We seem to have hose reels on the sides of some of those. Um, and then that's the tops. We've got the little honeycomb gratings printed in. So they're solid, but they're going to look all right once you've painted them and give them a bit of a wash. That's the back of the radar and the mast. Look at the detail on the mast. It is stunning. 
that is what uh, model ship bulkheads should look like. Well done, take on. That is proper lovely. Okay, sprue D, um, and we have again more of the larger parts on this. Um, so we've got the um, shaft lines, which has the A bracket moulded in, but it's lovely and crisp. Not much in the way of clean up in these. Uh, same with the bilge keels. Um, propellers. They're okay, possibly a little a little chunky, but they're okay. Um, and what I think is torpedo tubes, lots of lovely detail. We've got some nice texture on the ship's boat there. It's obviously got a canvas back, and they've they've put that into the frame there, so that's lovely. The deriggable look, looks a little bit basic on the top. We'll have to have a look at some pictures of that. Um, that looks like it's a little bit lacking in detail, but it almost stands out as the only thing that is, to be honest. Do have some tiny parts. Lockers have all got doors in. Um, that's our rudder, which, yeah, is definitely goes in fixed. All the connection points are on the side where you'd be cleaning off the seam anyway. It's our bridge roof. It's a chunky piece of plastic that is. Uh, bridge windows are all solid. We've got no wipers on them. Um, so you're going to have to paint those in. But the moulding is crisp and they look, well, they look spot on. So can't gripe at that. Little bit of a heavy seam on that part. But that's almost the only, from a cleaning up point of view, that's almost the only thing I've seen that that would need a little bit more attention. Uh, you know, new tooling, you'd expect that. I'm guessing that those are windows, and that's some form of control tower that, that goes on in between the two hangar doors. So those that have to be painted as windows. We need to check that, obviously. That's our radar bulge for the bow, and some nicely detailed. Davits, and then we've got the radar towers which have got ladders moulded on but really well done we've got cable runs we've got watertight doors you name it it's on there it's a work of art it's really 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 nice look at the uh, detail on the ship's boats there That is lovely. G is our helicopter body. Uh, just like Trumpeter, take them off, opted to go with clear parts. So you need some careful painting to pick out the, the clear windows in that. Um, yeah. The. Uh, yeah, then they look nice enough. There's lots of detail in terms of panel lines and stuff. Um, a little bit of work needed just to clean them up and get get the best out of them, but um, yeah. I can't see them particularly well, but they look okay. Okay, the next sprue deals with the lower hull. It's to totally, totally smooth. Um, it's nicely moulded though. I can't see any sink, I think. And the, the, the bow is razor sharp, so that is good. Um, shape seems good. There is some surface scratching where you've got two, two sprues next to each other in the bag. So uh, that doesn't surprise me, but it's minimal. I mean, you won't no notice it with a single coat of primer and it's gone without any cleanup work. Um, yeah, I'm interested to see how well the, these work. But yeah, there's no, but there's also no anodes or anything like that. Given the amount of detail that they're adding, if you look at the uh, at the uh, capstan area there, there's some really really fine detail. Why don't we get anodes on that? 
it wouldn't wouldn't be difficult to do. So looking at the transom, it's got all sorts of shapes and things in it. So I'm assuming that is correct. I don't know whether they should be openings. We'd have to have a look. The um, hose pipes are open though, so that is nice. The um, helicopter deck has got some really, really nice detail on it, including a very, very fine textured honeycomb grating there. Um, but yeah, you can see what I was saying before about the uh, decals are going to have a challenge sitting on that. So you might be best trying to um, mask it and paint it rather than decal it. But uh, lots of detail of texture on there. Nothing on here, as you'd imagine, for steel deck. That's where the lifeboats are going. Um, but here we've got some hatches and bits and pieces. And they're really lovely. You've got fasteners all the way around in. Look at the detail on that. It's just really nice. Um, that's where our anchor chains will go. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Plastic to look at is sprue F and it's our two hull sides. Um, so what I am seeing is we have some detail. We have some cable runs of some type, whatever they are, I am not sure. Uh, we've got some, I think those should be openings, again I'm not sure but I think they should be openings. Uh, we've got the little raised area where the coat of arms go um, and we've got the cutout for the anchor but as we spotted in the instructions, no horse pipe hole actually. Um, I don't see any sink. There's a little bit of flash, but there's no uh, there's no weld marks or canning or anything like that. So it's largely just a flat surface, but it does have the, all the angles in that that are there. So that looks all right. Yeah, definitely, definitely a bit of flash. So there will be some cleanup needed once you get these parts done. Uh, we've got the little lamps moulded in there. The red and green lamps. Open horse pipe there, but then we're glow gluing solid behind it, so that'll need a little bit of thought. Open horse pipes at the stern as well. Uh, and then there is some detail here where we know that's above the deck level. And that looks really quite nice as well. Very finely done. Proof will be in the fit. I'm not too worried about the fit with it being take on. Should be okay. They appear to have done the gates. If you look at them side on, don't know if you can see that on camera. The gates are just on the outside surface rather than the top. So you're not going to damage the, the straight edge. Lovely. So there we have it. Takecom's first ever 1350 model ship kit, to my knowledge. Um, what are my first impressions? Um, wow. Um, I think it looks really, really, really nice. The level of detail is breathtaking in places. Uh, really well done. Um, I'm sure there's more detail that could be added because Clearly, there is no railings um, included, which I think is a shame. Um, and that is probably my low light of the kit, is no etched railings. It will be difficult to get um, good railings for this because, uh, although a lot of it will be standard three or four bar, you'd have to do your research. On the back, you'd be looking for netted versions, which are harder to find. So, uh, you know... Uh, for, for me, it's an omission not having the railings in. That being said, the rest of the kit, the plastic parts, are absolutely stunning. They're well designed, they're really busy, they've crammed as much detail in as they can, and they've done it very, very crisply. So the only other uh, model ship that I've seen with that level of detail 
has been Airfix's Type 45 Destroyer and um, their HMS Illustrious. But the moulding crispness is much better in this than it is in those two older Airfix kits. Um, the, the decals cover the main bases. Um, I think you've, I mean, it's showing here one, two, three flags. We've got one. So, uh, again, I suspect the aftermarket people might start producing some bits and pieces. I'll be looking out for some photo etch upgrades before I do anything more with this, but it doesn't need much. Um, so, let's go through this logically. Um, plus points, subject matter, really, really nice. It's nice to see a modern German ship being done. We don't get enough uh, modern ships being done. Um, outside of the uh, Chinese Navy, in, in my opinion. Um, so nice to see a European ship being done. Um, it's um, The detail is done really well. The moulding is done really well. Um, the instructions are clear enough. Um, not the best instructions I've ever seen, but they're going to get you where you need to be. So um, fine with that. Helicopter, just one included. But uh, what they've done looks really nice. And once you've put the rotors and things on, um, you've got some nice options there to have the, the rotors closed or open. So, yeah, no problems with that. Um, low lights, like we've just said, um, no railings, uh, perhaps a little bit light on the decals. Um, uh, other than that, I can't think of anything else that... that I see as a fault. Oh, there wasn't a rigging plan at all. Um, obviously, there would be some signal flags. So you can see here in this picture, there is a little bit of rigging. It'd be nice to have had a rigging plan. Again, it's something I say about a lot of uh, a lot of model kits. Um, how does it compare to others? I think the level of detail is better than Tamiya. Um, I think it's probably better than Airfix, who I previously would have said put the the best level of surface detail in um, onto superstructure. Um, um, it all looks correct, so it's certainly as good as a trumpeter kit. I would think the level of detail might even be slightly better. Um, so I actually think Tacom have, on their first jaunt into 1350 scale ships, has produced one of the best 1350 scale model ship kits ever. So, there you go. It's, uh, it's a really nice kit, and I'm looking forward to building it once we get a little bit more aftermarket out. Okay, hope that was helpful. Take care, everyone, and I will see you very soon.